Hi, I'm Harold Moret with Copper Development Association. From time to time, piping technicians may be called upon to install or service medical gas systems or distribution piping. Medical gas systems of various types are installed in thousands of healthcare and laboratory facilities for life-saving equipment and patient treatment. Proper care must be taken at all times to ensure that there is a strict compliance with applicable codes. In this video, we will introduce you to approved copper materials and installation methods for medical gas piping. To assist me today is Ron Gamusio. Welcome, Ron. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Harold. What type of gases are considered medical? Medical gas systems are used to transfer gases such as oxygen, nitrous oxide, medical air, and medical vacuum. So what types of copper tube are acceptable for medical gas systems? For medical gas systems, you can use copper tube either type K or type L, meaning the requirements of ASTM BA-19. The copper tube must be hard temper and from one quarter inch in size to eight inch in size. Medical gas tube will have green markings for type K and blue markings for type L. These will include an ink marking in any of the following five ways. Oxy, med, oxy slash med, oxy slash ACR, or ACR slash med, signifying that it is for medical gas use. The tube is clean and capped at the factory to protect it from any contamination. For systems operating at pressures over 185 PSIG, or more than three inches nominal size, type K copper tube must be used. Any valves and fittings approved for medical gas must be the code and standard for your area. Be sure to check your local code for compliance. Okay, Harold, are we now ready to install the system? Yes, but first let's go over some steps to ensure that we have a properly braced joint. These must meet the requirement of NFPA 99 healthcare facility code. Our first step is making sure that we have a correct measurement of the tube, this is critical in any piping system. Next is cutting. When cutting copper, be sure you have a good working tube cutter that is free from grease and oil. To be in compliance with code, the end of the tube needs to be reamed. Care must be taken to prevent chips from entering the tube. There are different types of acceptable reaming tools. Now you want to clean the end of the tube and the fitting. The tube end must be cleaned with a non-shedding abrasive pad to remove any surface oxides. The interior of the fitting should be clean using a clean, oil-free wire brush. Be sure no grid or debris enters the tube. Do not use grid-type paper. Keep in mind, Ron, flux is only used when bracing copper to brass or bronze. Once the tube and fittings are assembled and ready for bracing, the piping must be continuously purged with an approved perch gas like nitrogen to prevent the development of copper oxides on the interior of the tube and the fitting. Be sure to keep the perch gas on until the completed brace joints are cooled to the touch to prevent internal oxidation. Now we're ready to apply heat and alloy. The alloy must conform to the American Welding Society B cup classification. Never use solder on a medical gas system. Keep in mind too much heat or insufficient purge or a combination of the two will result in a formation of copper oxide inside of the tube. Harold, what should be done after the braze joints are completed? Well, according to NFPA 99, seal the opening to prevent any oxidation and maintain a nitrogen atmosphere until the last brace joint is complete. At this point, clean each brace joint with water or a wire brush to remove any oxides on the outside of the tube. Finally, installers and third-party verifiers should complete certification tests. Now remember, Ron, lives are at stake here, so it's very important to adhere to local or national codes. Sounds good, Harold. Thanks for having me here today. I learned a lot. Very good. Thanks for being here. Now, for more information for medical gas on other systems, you can visit copper.org.